Hello students, in our today's lecture we are going to solve numerical which is based on forced convection. So before solving numerical, let us revise our previous lecture. In our previous videos, we have used dimensional less analysis method to derive relation for the convective heat transfer coefficient with some dimension less numbers like Reynolds, Prandtl, Grashoff and Nusselt. We have seen our introduction of convection that convection mode of heat transfer is differ from the conduction and radiation because if we want to find out heat transfer rate by convection mode then we have to use equation Q is equal to HA delta T. In that equation H is a convective heat transfer coefficient and value of convective heat transfer coefficient is depends on so many parameters like fluid viscosity, density, its conductivity, its specific heat. So, for simplicity, we have used dimensionless analysis method to connect that all over variable with some specific dimensionless number and by using the dimensionless number, we are going to find out value of H. So, we have derived relation for the Reynolds, Prandtl, Grashoff, Nusselt, so, first for the forced convection, there are mainly three dimensionless number which we are going to use to find out value of convective heat transfer coefficient. And that three numbers are Reynolds number, Prandtl number and Nusselt number. So, let us first understand the physical significance of Reynolds, Prandtl and Nusselt. Then we will solve some numerical which is based on forced convection in which the fluid is flowing by some ex with the help of some external arrangement such like pump. So, first understand physical significance of dimensionless number. The first number is Nusselt number. Now, what is Nusselt number? What its physical significance? So, to understand, first consider this figure. Here, there is a layer of a fluid and the temperature of this bottom layer is T1 and the temperature of this layer is T2. So, the temperature difference between the two layers are T2 minus T1, clear. Suppose the thickness of this layer is capital L. If T2 is greater than T1, then obviously heat will flow from higher temperature to the lower temperature so that from T2 to T1, so here the direction of heat transfer is from T2 to T1 as you can see in the figure. So, heat transfer through the fluid layer will be by convection when fluid involves some motion and by conduction when the fluid layer is motionless. We know whenever there is a no motion of the fluid then whatever heat transfer takes it is by conduction mode and whenever there is a motion of fluid whatever heat transfer takes place it is by convection mode. So, if there is a no motion involved then heat transfer by conduction and if there is a sub motion then heat transfer will be by convection mode. So, heat flux the rate of heat transfer per unit time per unit surface area in both case can be defined as for the convection we know for the convection H A delta T for heat flux Q by area. So, that Q convection heat flux for the convection would be H delta T. Similarly, for conduction equation, Fourier equation K dt by dx, so Q by A heat flux is equal to K delta T by L, the thickness of the fluid layer as we can see in this figure. So, the salt number is nothing, it is just the ratio of heat flux by convection to the heat flux by the conduction. So, for convection we have equation H delta T, for conduction we have equation K delta T by L. So, simplifying this equation we will get HL by K. This HL by K is known as the Nusselt number as we have already derived in our previous videos in a dimensional, dimensional less analysis or method for the forced convection. We derived one pi term as HL by K which is known as the Nusselt number. This is a dimensionless number. Nusselt number represent the enhancement of heat transfer through a fluid layer as a result of convection relative to conduction. As you can see, if the value of Nusselt number is 1, if the value of Nusselt number is 1, it shows that whatever heat transfer takes, it is done by the conduction mode. So, there is no relative motion of a fluid. So, the higher the Nusselt number, the more, more heat transfer takes by the convection. 
okay so this is the significance of nacelle number whenever there is a, a huge motion bulk fluid motion then the nacelle number for that fluid value of nacelle number for that fluid will be higher so nacelle number represent the heat transfer rate by conduction or convection then so the larger the nacelle number the more effective the convection second is a prandtl number we have derived one pi term which is a prandtl number it is just a ratio of kinematic viscosity to thermal diffusivity in our previous video we have derived mu cp by k and we give name to this dimensionless number as a prandtl number if we simplify instead of mu we can write instead of this dynamic viscosity we can write rho into v density into kinematic viscosity cp by k as it is so here rho into cp we can write v upon k by rho cp now we know k by rho c is a thermal diffusivity which is denoted by alpha so prandtl number is simplify in v by alpha here v is a kinematic viscosity and alpha is a thermal diffusivity now what this equation indicates so kinematic viscosity indicates the impulse transport through molecular friction whereas the thermal diffusivity indicates the heat energy transported by conduction process this equation also represent that if the value of prandtl number is depends on v upon alpha v means it is a kinematic viscosity so it represent the whatever heat transfer takes place it is due to the impulse transport through the molecular friction due to the friction whereas thermal diffusivity indicates the heat energy transported by conduction process if the value of prandtl number is higher then the whatever heat transfer takes place from the fluid it is due to the impulse transport through the molecular friction clear and the third number is reynolds number we have already studied this reynolds number in our fluid mechanics subject that whenever there is a some flow of a fluid it will be laminar flow or transient flow or turbulent flow it depends on the surface geometry surface roughness free stream velocity surface temperature type of fluid these are the variables which define the flow of a particular fluid so there is a one number from from this value from the value of this reynolds number we can predict the type of flow which is going to take place after the experiment the reynolds the scientists discover that the flow region depends mainly on the ratio of viscous force inertia force to the viscous force reynolds number is the ratio of inertia force and viscous force and this inertia force and viscous force of the fluid define the type of flow either it will be laminar transient or turbulent generally we know that whenever there is a, a, a fluid with a lower velocity then some portion of the fluid some portion of the flow is going to be laminar when there is a huge velocity of a fluid it is going to be a turbulent generally it is a ratio of inertia force and viscous force for the inertia force v into lc and this is a viscous force which is denoted by this v so here instead of this kinematic viscosity we can write mu by rho so this is instead of kinematic viscosity this is mu dynamic viscosity divided by rho v into lc as it is lc is a characteristic length of the particular our system lc is a characteristic length so these are the three numbers reynolds numbers prandtl's numbers and nacelle number now based on this number let's learn how to solve numerical which is based on forced convection so <clears throat> whenever there is a motion of fluid by some external arrangement so velocity is predefined of fluid and that kind of convection is known as the forced convection so let's understand our first numerical a 200 volt bulb of a spherical shape of 7 cm diameter is subjected to a flow of air at 30 degree celsius so surrounding fluid is air whose temperature is 30 degree celsius there is a bulb 200 watt of bulb its shape is assumed to be a spherical with the diameter of 7 cm so in given data diameter d is equal to 7 cm surrounding temperature of air t infinite is 30 degree celsius now the velocity of air is 0.4 meter per second so velocity of air v is equal to 0.4 meter per second so from this clue we have to understand this is the numerical of forced convection surface temperature of bulb is 120 degree celsius so ts would be 120 degree celsius 
calculate the rate of heat transfer by convection from bulb surface we have to find out the rate of heat transfer by the convection so we we have to use equation q is equal to ha delta t at mean temperature of 7 75 degree celsius obviously this is 30 this is 120 so total 150 divided by 2 so mean temperature would be 75 so at 75 degree celsius we need fluid properties properties of air because here our external fluid or surrounding fluid is air so at 75 degree celsius properties are given of air uh, this is kinematic viscosity conductivity parental number is also given use the relation this this is the relation given for the between the nusselt reynolds and parental in dimensionless method we have derived that nusselt number is a function of reynolds and parental so this is the relation which is given between the nusselt reynolds and parental so by using this relation first we need to find out value of convective heat transfer coefficient because if we want to find out heat transfer rate by convection mode then we have to use equation q is equal to ha delta t in that equation a is a surface area delta t is a temperature difference between the surface temperature and the surrounding fluid temperature so the only unknown is h and h can be find out by using this relation so to use this relation first we need to find out value of reynolds number Pre value of parental number is already given and we know that nusselt number is equal to hlc by k where lc is a characteristic length characteristic length means the dimension which is going to be involved for the convection mode of heat transfer for a plate if there is a horizontal plate and the convection is going to take place from the surface of that plate then the length of that surface is going to be our characteristic length if there is a pipe and there is a flow of water inside the pipe then whatever convection takes place it is going to be cover the diameter of the pipe so for in that case the diameter of the pipe is going to be our characteristic length if there is a cylinder which is vertical and then convection is going to take place then the height the total length of that cylinder is going to be our characteristic length so the characteristic length either it is diameter or it is going to be a height or length it depends on the orientation of that particular system so it is going to be changed according to the numerical so in our numerical there is a bulb which is a spherical so obviously the diameter of that bulb is going to be our characteristic length so first we are going to find out value of reynolds number the equation of reynolds number v into d v into d by nu this is our kinematic viscosity which is already given in equation 2.06 into 10 to minus 6 v is our velocity which is given 0.4 meter per second and d this is our characteristic length for characteristic dimension because characteristic length makes confusion so now we are going to pronounce characteristic dimension so here for our numerical for this system the characteristic dimension is going to be the diameter so it is 0 0.07 as mentioned in question so after putting the value we will get reynolds number is equal to 1.35 into 10 raise to 4 now in this relation we have value of reynolds number we have value of rental number which is given in question so nusselt number is equal to this we know the value of uh, equation for the nusselt number is hlc by k here our characteristic dimension is diameter so hd by k 0 0.365 1.35 into 10 raise to 4 this is the value of reynolds number raise to 0.6 parental number value 0 0.7 which is given in equation raise to 0 0.33 we know the diameter we know the conductivity so in this equation only h is unknown so after solving we will get value of h is 41.99 watt per meter square kelvin now we know we want uh, we have we want area surface area for the equation h delta t so surface area this is a spherical shape so the area would be 4 pi r square the radius 0, uh, 0 0.07 divided by 2 square now the convective heat transfer rate can be easily calculated by using h a delta t value of h we have just calculated surface area 1.5 into 10 to minus 2 surface air, surface temperature of the bulb is 120 and surrounding air temperature is 30 degree so after solving this equation we will get heat transfer rate by convection would be 58.17 watt okay
so this is how we are going to solve numerical which is based on convection there must be some relation between nusselt prandtl and reynolds which is already given in question always in numerical of convection the final goal is to find out convective heat transfer rate so to find out convective heat transfer rate we have to use ha delta t for ha delta t the area would be surface area which is already uh, we can already calculate according to the geometry which is mentioned in question ts and t infinite is surface temperature and fluid surrounding fluid temperature which is also given in question so our first step in solving numerical based on convection is to find out the value of h so to find out value of h we have to use the relation which is given in question based on reynolds and prandtl number so this is how we are going to solve all the numericals of a forced convection so this is part 1 of numerical in upcoming videos we are going to solve more numerical based on forced convection so that's it for today thank you so much